So Shelly and I are really excited for today. We've had a lot of questions um, and a lot of requests to do a deep dive on documents. Um, it's, such a, it's such a central part of running a health and wellness practice and being able to communicate with our clients. Um, and it's obviously a big part of you know, um, the functionality of Practice Better. So we're really looking forward to jumping in, um, going through you know, the nitty gritty of working with documents, uh, hopefully you know, unraveling any, uh, any, what's the word? any obstacles that you, you may have felt that you, you had around documents um, and just you know, give you a lot of clarity on it. And then we're gonna go through a couple scenarios, uh, a couple common scenarios that we get towards the end as well and uh, take any questions, as many questions from you as we can. Okay, so documents people. Yeah, so documents, as I mentioned, such an important part of being able to communicate with clients, being able to keep yourself organized. So documents in practice better, we're specifically talking about when we go to my practice and we go to documents. So this document section here is what really helps you keep your, your, your files organized it helps you manage them, and it also helps you share them with clients in an organized fashion. So you can use documents for one of two things. One is, as I mentioned, to organize your files, or the second one is to share those files with clients. So they can be private or they can be shared, okay? So right now, what you should be looking at is my documents page, Okay, and when you set up your practice better account for the first time and you go to my practice and then documents, this page here is going to be empty. Okay, there won't be anything on this page, it will be blank. And as you start to add clients to your practice better account, practice better will automatically generate a folder for these clients. And then you'll start to see, for example, like Diane Sear or Mary Smith. That makes sense. Who in here, who, who's joining us live for the chat is already using documents and practice better? Who's using it for organizing their files? Just let us know in the chat if you're using it to organize your files. <clears throat> yes. Bit hit or miss though. All right, hopefully we'll make it a hit after this. <laughs> yeah, that's what the deep dives are for. Yeah, organizing files. The newbie. Yeah. We like newbies. Yes, we love, we love all of you. Um, perfect. Okay, so we're getting people using it for organizing the files. Some are starting, just starting to use it for um, documents to organize their files. Who's using documents to share files with their clients? Milan, yes. Vanessa, yes. Robert, yes. Cindy, I do. Exclamation points, yes. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Not yet, but that's my plan. Okay, perfect. So I just wanted to get an idea of, you know, who's using this, this functionality and what you're using it for. Um, so for those of you who are not using documents yet or you're not using them extensively, I just want to clarify, we're talk, we're, we call this section documents, but it is not specific to only documents, right? So you can share other files as well. So in addition to sharing things like Word docs or PDFs, which we might um, you know, initially think of when we think of documents, you can also share, uh, upload and share audio files, videos, spreadsheets. So you can really share multimedia, uh, multimedia files as well. Okay, so that, whether that be for private reference or to share with your clients as we've been saying, right? Mm -hmm. So first thing, we're coming into documents. And as I mentioned, as you add a client to, the, to your Practice Better account, there's gonna be a folder generated for them. Okay, so for example, Mary Smith's folder is here. Let's look at how we wanna organize our files first. Okay, so if I wanted to come in here and I say, hey, I've got all these documents that I regularly share with my clients and I want to create a folder for them, you're going to see at the top of the, your 
um, page in the green navigation bar, there's a, a little folder with a plus sign. And if you hover over, it says new folder. So this is where you're going to create a new folder from, okay? So if I wanted to say like client handouts, right? I can name my folder client handouts, click create, and now it's going to be in my list of folders. So these files here are all going to be in alphabetical order. So if you want those folders, you want that client handouts folder to be at the top. Right now it is because I don't have a client whose name starts with an A. What I would suggest is actually editing the name. Okay, so this little pencil that you see when you hover over client handouts folder, that pencil means you can edit the name of it. So you click on the pencil, and I would suggest putting something like a special character or a number at the at the beginning of this uh, the beginning of this folder name. So it's going to automatically stay at the top of your folder list. So if I want to call this like one client handouts, right? And then maybe lab reports. Again, it's it happens to be second in the list, but that's just because no one's above it. I can go ahead and put a two and save my changes. And let's see, meal plan. If I wanted that guy to be at the top of the list as well, I would edit it and I'll say three. So you're gonna see that all the folders, my organizational folders are going to be at the top of, ahead of my client folders, right? So those might be the folders that you're looking for regularly. So maybe a really good trick would be to add a numeric value or a special character to the front of your, uh, your folder name. Did anyone know that you could put a special character or a number to the beginning of your folder to put it to the, at the top of the list? No, Jennifer, no idea. Okay, so who's gonna use this trick? Good, awesome, all right. Yay, use it all the time, Vanessa, awesome. Definitely, good, all right. So we just wanna make keeping these files easy for you, right? And easily organized, pardon me. All right, so now that we created a folder, now you wanna talk, now we wanna talk about how to add files to your folder, okay? So in the bottom of your, in the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see this red fast action button. For those of you who aren't new to practice better, you know that the red button, is our go-to button. So on the documents page, this red button actually means allows us to upload files from our hard drives. So that's right from your computer, okay? So you're gonna click the red button. You're gonna click on select files. And then you can choose from the files you have in your hard drive, what you wanna upload. So let's say I wanna upload the kitchen clean out guide. So I'm gonna say open. Because I was in my home page, the folder, the default folder is going to say home, but I can change this. I can change the folder and say, actually, I want that to go into my client handouts folder. So just click on client handouts, select folder, and then upload it, okay? So now, when I click on client handouts, I double click on it, there's that file, okay? So anytime that you're hovering over, whether it be a folder, or it be a file, you're going to see other options to the right of it, okay? So because we're on a file, it'll allow me to view it. So this little eye that we see here is to preview the file. That means you don't have to download it to your computer to see what's in there. You can actually just take a look at it here and now. So let's see what's in this kitchen clean out guide. And the kitchen clean out guide's a bit you know, maybe it's a bit obvious as to what's in there, but when you're looking through files that you uploaded for a client a year ago, or maybe you didn't have a really great naming system to the files that you were uploading, sometimes it's really helpful to just click and preview the, preview the file as opposed to downloading it when you're looking for a specific document um, or you're just looking for what's in there altogether. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, okay. So we have this guide, so we can go back and we can add more files, right? We can keep going to select files and we can say, I wanna add the 10 day challenge as well. 
and again, upload it or change the folder if you'd like, because we're already in the client handouts folder. Now that's the default folder, but I can change it. Okay, I can go back to the home folder if I wanted. And then additionally, you can also upload files from your Google Drive or your Dropbox, okay? So before you can upload files from your Google Drive or your Dropbox, you're gonna have to go into the little gear in the top right corner, settings and preferences. And under third party integration, let me take you there quickly. You're gonna see Dropbox and Google Drive at the top. So you would just click on link. These ones are already linked, so I see unlink. But you'll just click on link and then you're gonna put in your Dropbox or Google Drive credentials to link it right to practice better. Okay, so it's, it's very, uh, it's very straightforward. So once those are linked, let's go back to documents. And now we can upload documents from either the Google Drive or the Dropbox. So let's click on, click on Dropbox. And if I wanted to upload this blood work file, okay? So I'm just gonna say import to my documents and then say import again, okay? So no one, the important thing when we're talking about Dropbox or Google Drive, no one's gaining access to your Google Drive account or your Dropbox account. Practice Better is just basically making a copy of these files and, and uploading it to Practice Better, okay? So and Natalie, just, yeah. if, you were to, if you had uploaded some files from Google Drive or Dropbox and then you deleted them on Practice Better, would that delete it on Dropbox or Google Drive? Oh, really good question. No, it wouldn't. Good question. Um, so like Shelly mentioned, the Dropbox or Google Drive, once I've uploaded these files to Practice Better, if I delete them in Practice Better or I delete them in Google Drive, they're, very, they're independent of one another. Okay, so if I delete the file in Practice Better, it's not going to be affected in Google Drive. If I delete the file in Google Drive, it's not going to be affected in Practice Better. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, so now in Google Drive, you simply click on Google Drive, you find the folder you want to, you want to um, upload a document from, and let's say the importance of water, say import to my documents, Again, choose the folder. So maybe this is also a client handout. Select folder and then import. Okay. So the three files that we just uploaded to client handouts are all here. Okay. So that's just the that's just how easy it is to upload files to Practice Better. Who has any issues with uploading files to Practice Better? Or any questions about it? There's a question about um, downloading from OneDrive. Um, you can, you can't. We don't, we don't integrate with OneDrive. Um, you can download the file and then upload it to Practice Better, but it doesn't directly link to Practice Better. Okay. All right. Great. All right, I'm a bit slow, I'm used to being on two screens, so the chat, now I found it, but I have to navigate around the page to get there, so I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so I think we're good for uploading files to practice better, and typically that's, that's what we found, but the questions tend to be around, now what do we want to, how do we share these files with our clients, right, and then how do we find them afterwards? So as I mentioned, if we want to share a file with a client or Right, so we would find the file we want to share. So let's say any unorganized file, any file that you've uploaded to the home page, and this is our home page in documents, they're going to show up at the bottom of the folders, so below the folders. Okay, so these three documents here were just uploaded into the home folder. Okay, so if I wanted to share this 10 day challenge with my client, I can click on the two little, the icon of the two little people. Okay, so it's managing your sharing settings. And you're going to see if it hasn't yet been shared, that it's private. Okay, so that means only you can see it. But if you want to share it with clients, you can say share with the specific client. And you're going to be able to choose from the list of clients who have access to the client portal. 
So that is the piece that's really important. You cannot share a document with a client who does not have access to the client portal. Okay. It's just, we wouldn't have anywhere to send it. <laughs> So they need access to the client portal to be able to have a document shared with you or shared with them, pardon me. So let's say I want to share this file with Jennifer Smith. So I'm gonna check mark Jennifer Smith's name and I'm gonna say update. Okay. But this 10 day challenge, maybe it's a great, it's a great, it's a great handout that you might wanna share with multiple clients. So if you wanna go back and share that file again with someone else, you would just go back and click on this little icon of the two people again manage sharing settings, and now choose the other people you wanna share it with, okay? So don't unselect the original person who received it because then you're going to remove their access, okay? So I went ahead and I clicked on Mary Smith and Clark Kent and I said update. And now these same three people, these three people have access to that file. So if I just do a one tap or one click on the 10 day challenge, on the right hand side of my screen, you're gonna actually see who has access to the file. So I don't have to click into it to see that. I can just touch it, click it once, and then you're going to see who has access to it and when I shared it with them. Okay. So if you do want to remove someone's access, again, you can click on the little the little icon of the two people. And now I can say, I can unselect Clark Kent and update. And now Clark Kent doesn't have access to that file anymore. And we see that in the bottom right hand corner up on the right side of the document. Uh, can the client change? Okay, can you share multiple files at one time? Absolutely. Great question. So select multiple at the top. The top of your documents page, you should see select multiple. So you can either select multiple files, you can, share, you can select multiple folders. And once you've selected the multiple files or folders, you would click on again at the top now, the settings are at the top, the icon with the two people. You would change the setting from private to share with specific clients. And then you would choose the one person you want to share the, all of these files with or the, the multiple people you want to share it with, okay? And then you'll say update. So Natalie, there's a question, you know, when you share a file, how is the client notified? Like, how do they know that they have a shared file? Yeah, that's a good question. So they'll get, they're going to get an email. They're going to get an email letting them know that you've shared a file with them. And then when they're logged into their Practice Better client portal, they're also going to see a little notification on the bell in the top right corner. Mm -hmm. And if they click on it, it's going to say um, that you've shared a file with them and they'll click on it, it'll take them to the file. And then um, are the clients able to change the documents? I'm not sure what, um, what she means by change, but I no. know if they download, they download it, like if it was a Word document and then the client downloaded it to their computer, they could change it. Yeah, so they, it's a, it would work the same way as if you emailed a file to a client they're not going to be able to alter the original file that you've uploaded. But if you sent them, even by email, a Word document, they could download it and fill it in and type on it if, if, if they needed to or they wanted to, maybe it was a worksheet. Um, but they can't, they can't change your original document. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And then um, are they able to print, print it out, print the document out? Yes. So, We'll look at the client side in a little bit, but basically it would look the same here as we see here. So let's go back to client handouts. If you wanted to view the document, you could do that, or you could download it. And clients will have the same option on their side. They can just say download, the arrow pointing down. It's gonna to download to their computer, and then from there, they'll be able to print out the handout. Okay. Uh, okay. When you share a file, how does the client know access, access the file? Deb, I think, um, I think we answered that question. Uh, Naomi, can I edit the words? That's what you're talking about. Yeah, so let me know if we answered that question. Perfect, I think we did. Great. Okay, so now let's look at, sorry. 
So now we created this client handouts folder and we uploaded files to it, right? So I just wanted to talk to you about uploading files from your hard drive versus Google Drive or Dropbox. There are just a couple things to keep in mind. So when you're uploading a file from your hard drive, you can upload up to 10 files at a time, okay? So up to 10 files at one time from your, uh, from your computer hard drive. When you're uploading from Dropbox or Google Docs, you're only able to upload one file at a time. So if you're working from your computer that happens to be linked to your Google Drive, you can, um, you can usually select that when you're uploading from your hard drive. So let me show you here. So you would click on the red button again to upload from your hard drive. And then on the left side, you could find, typically find your Google Drive. So that's a nice way around not having to do one file at a time. Okay. So there's one other thing with when uploading from Google Drive that I want to bring to your attention. So if we, let's go from Google Drive here. And let's say we want to upload this feature highlight, okay? So import from my documents. And you have the option to import it in different types, in different formats. So the default is going to say to import it as a Word doc, but you can also choose to import it as a PDF file or in the RTF format. Okay. I'm just going Sorry guys. Just trying to move my screen a little bit. Okay. So here again, we can do a PDF, and if we could do that, no, it's not saying, but when we download it, it'll be in a PDF format. So for those of you who don't have time to be able to edit anything, even on their own personal files, then you might want to upload it in a PDF format. So when they download it, it's PDF and they can't change that. Okay? All right. So now let's look at where we find our client's files. Okay? So Mary Smith, for example, I want to upload something for Mary Smith. I can go, I can do this in a couple places. So one, I can go to my practice and documents, which is where we already are, okay? I could click on her folder here and I can upload in the three ways we just talked about right directly into her file. The other way you can access her file or upload files into her documents folder is going to, let's say my clients and Mary Smith, and then on the bottom, on the left-hand side, on the bottom of your menu for Mary Smith, you're going to see documents. So this is the change. This used to say shared documents, and now it says documents, okay? So now instead of only seeing the shared files or the files that have been shared with Mary Smith by yourself or shared with you by Mary Smith are visible here as well as any files that you have not shared with her, okay? So when I'm in Mary Smith's file, let me just go back here. When I'm in Mary Smith's file and I go down to documents, now you see shared documents and these are the unshared documents, okay? So if I click on all shared documents, this is going to bring you to that familiar breakdown of the shared, um, the shared folder. So basically where you'd be able to filter out documents that were shared via the messenger, Okay, none for messenger, documents that were shared via the protocol, shared by uh, uploaded forms, shared from session attachments, right? So this is just basically filtering, okay? At the bottom of that list will be all of the files that have been shared between you and Mary Smith. And then you can see the root of where they were shared, okay? So this one was shared um, as, part of her, as part of her food journal entry, okay? And then below that is, are the files that you uploaded yourself. So if I wanted to create a folder in Mary Smith's file from here, now I can do that as well. So you'll just click on the new folder in the top right-hand corner. And I can say Mary's handouts, for example. Okay. And create it. 
And if I wanted to maybe move these files into Mary's handouts, I could do that. I can just drag and drop it. Or again, I can upload files right from my hard drive into Mary's handout. So I can double click on it. And we'll give her the essential oils and say upload. Okay. So now Mary's handouts, which is a subfolder within Mary's, Mary's document folder, um, are, they're here and they're available for you to share. So we can tell that they haven't been shared with Mary because there's no little icon beside the name of the file. There's no little icon of the two people, okay? So if I wanted to go ahead and share, let's say this antioxidant rich foods document with Mary, you gotta click on the two people and now change it from private to share with client, okay? So client is only Mary Smith. We're not going to see any other clients other than Mary Smith because this folder is actually linked to her record, okay, linked to her client file. Natalie? Yes. So um, is there a way for the user to tell if a client has viewed or downloaded documents that you've shared with them? No, there's not, not at the moment. Um, that's a that's a really great suggestion. Um, there's not a way for you to be able to see if they've viewed it or downloaded it yet. You can just see that they have access to it. Um, okay. So for those of you who've already been using documents, how do you feel about now from Mary Smith's file or your client's file being able to see all documents when you click on documents? Let me know in the chat if this helps or if it's more confusing. Helps, good, definitely helps, good. That's what we're going for. <laughs> so, Deb, it sounds good. It helps, helpful, great. Okay, good. So for those of you who were using this feature before, Okay, before we actually showed the uploaded files. Let me backtrack here. Okay. In documents, in the client's file, when you click on documents, now it doesn't only show the shared documents. Now it also shows your uploaded documents. Okay. So you may click on documents and find that it says, let me see here, Diane's here. If we go to documents here, you're get, you might get a pop-up, okay? And this here says that we're unable to locate a home folder for this client, okay? Has anyone come up across this, come up against this over the last few days? Okay, well, I'm gonna give you this just in case it comes up. This basically means that your folder that you have for your client, let's go back to the original, my practice documents, okay? It just means that the file, the folder is not actually linked to your client's account, okay? So you can tell if you want to, if you have a couple, you know, you have some time at the end of the day, you can go into my practice and documents. And if you see a folder that doesn't have the icon of a person inside of it, right? Like we see from Mary Smith, it just means it's not linked to their account, okay? So let me show you how to quickly do that in case you come up against this. Um, for all clients that are new, as of the time of this update moving forward, it's just, it's just gonna work perfect. It's gonna work fine. You won't have to make any changes. But let's say Diane's here. I wanna create a new folder for her. So I'm gonna click on her name on the left-hand side. It'll say create folder. Okay. And now I'm just gonna go back to my home page and click on the folder that does not have the icon of the person in it, okay? So we'll click on Diane's here again. We'll use that select multiple option. And the first box at the top next to name will actually select everything, okay? So you don't have to go select them one by one, okay? And at the top, next to where you see that big cancel button, there's a folder with, a, with an arrow in it. So that just means move files. 
Okay, so we're going to move all the files from this folder into Diane Sears folder with the little person in the folder. Okay. So now we're basically just moving all the content in this folder to the new one and we're going to delete this one. We delete the, the empty one. Again, the empty one is the one without the person in it. Okay, or the icon of the person in it. And when we go back to my clients and Diane Sear and we click on documents again, you're going to see this is her root file. This is her linked or home file or folder, pardon me, where we can go in and see all shared documents and all the documents I've uploaded for her. All right. Did that make sense? Shelly, did that make sense? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so can you, can you show me how to create a new folder inside that root folder? Absolutely. So you can get to that root folder from your client's file under documents, which would bring us here. Okay. And all you're going to do is you're going to click on the, the folder with a plus sign in the top right hand corner. Can you see it? And then you'll name it here. So my client, oh, whoops. Sorry, my client's new folder, right? Maybe I'd say like Diane's new folder, so I wouldn't get confused if I were working with it, okay? So you can keep going back to the folder with the plus sign in the top right-hand corner, and it's going to create a folder within whatever folder you're currently in, okay? So the other way you can get here, if you were, not if you didn't happen to be in your client's file at the time you could just go straight to my practice and then documents choose the file or the file sorry the client so mary smith again and then the folder with the plus sign, plus sign in the top right hand corner mary's journals i'm just going to say that okay and create So Natalie, there, some, mm -hmm. someone's asking, uh, why do you need to link the folder? You don't have to. It just, the, the, if you don't, it just makes it accessible from their file is all. So if I go into, again, Mary Smith's file and I go to documents, I can see shared documents and uploaded documents. Whereas if I don't have a, uh, I don't know if that's one other. Let me see if this person has their folder linked. Yeah, otherwise you're not going to be able to. So you only have to do this. So if you're adding new clients to the system now, they're automatically going to be linked. Their, their folder that we generate for them is automatically going to be linked to their client file. So when you come in here, you're not, have to, you're not gonna have to link anything. It'll be done automatically. Um, but this is just because before, under my practice and documents, the folders we generated for clients, like the one for Jennifer Smith we see here, we didn't use to link these to their accounts. You used to have to come to my practice, uh, my documents to see the folders with, their up, with the uploaded files for them. Okay, so this is something you would do once. And you can always see it from, the, you can always do it from the left-hand side as well. So on the left-hand side, this is also a really great tip. If ever you happen to delete someone's file, like if I deleted Jennifer Smith's file by accident, and I was like, oh my gosh, I just deleted her folder. You can, if it was empty, <laughs> you would need tech support if it had stuff in it, but you can come in and uh, create a new folder for her by clicking on her name in the left-hand side and create folder. And now this one's linked to her file. And we see that because we have the little icon of the person inside of that. So there's, <clears throat> there's a question um, I think I could answer real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the difference between documents and protocols? 
Um, yeah. So document, think of documents like on your computer when you're organizing your files like Word, Excel, PDFs, you know, images. They're all files that you're organizing and storing and sharing with your clients. Whereas a protocol is actually, you know, you can create um, supplement recommendations, lifestyle recommendations, food recommendations that you can reuse for creating future protocol templates. So protocols are specific. You, you put a focus in there. So if it's a, you know, a detox, elimination, something like that. So the client, and then there's a duration. So it's really um, a protocol for a client to follow that's addressing a need that they have or a goal or a condition. And, you know, the protocols are just something that you can reuse over time the templates that are going to save you a lot of time. So it's very, very different from documents. <laughs> right. But on that note is if you are, sometimes you might be uploading, let's say, yeah. protocols that or recommendations that you created before using Practice Better. And in yeah. that instance, if maybe you don't have time to, to build them all into Practice Better, you could create a folder saying, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to call it previous recommendations. I can't type when people watch, as you guys know. I can't tell. That's good enough. Um, you can create a folder. Um, let's refresh this. Even practice better. You can create a folder with your previous recommendations here and then just upload them as opposed to, you know, creating them all and practice better at one time. That might be a way that you might use documents similar to protocols. Like if you don't want to recreate them and practice better just yet, um, you can go ahead and maybe upload them into a folder and share them with clients as needed. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, okay. So, I really hope that this is helpful and not more confusing than anything. Okay. All right. So the next thing we want to chat about is, um, is, okay. So the other thing is, is if you want to share a document. So this is another option you have with documents that are PDFs, okay? So PDF documents can also be shared in addition to being shared with a client. You can actually also fax these, okay? So if you have a PDF file in Practice Better and you wanna fax it to someone, you can do that. So one, you would just click on the file. So again, let's say this 10 day challenge. I'm gonna click on it once. And on the right hand side, you're going to see these different options at the top of the right hand side, okay? So you can say fax to, do you guys see that? Fax to, it's just right above the delete button on the right hand side. And now I can send this to someone. Okay, so maybe this was lab results um, that you received from a, you know, from a lab for a client and you wanna share it with a doctor. So I'm just gonna say like Dr. You know, Dr. Jones work. Okay, you can put a subject line like Mary Smith lab results, okay? And then you can just click send, okay? So just keep in mind that faxing is available on the pro plan with credits, okay? So you have to you have to purchase credits to be able to send fax from the pro plan. And it's also 100 fax pages are included in your plus plan, okay? So then you would just click send, and that would be sent to Dr. Jones. When you're in your documents, on the left-hand side in the menu, you have a faxes tab. Do you see this? So this is where you're gonna to go to find all the documents that have been sent via fax and all the documents that have been received via fax. Okay, so if I go to sent faxes, I can see what was, I can see what was sent there. And if I go to receive faxes, I can see what was received as well. Okay, so under receive faxes, because oftentimes, let's say again, you get the results from results of something from a doctor, or maybe your clients fax you something, 
then you want to organize it, right? So you can take a peek at what's under or what's in the file by viewing it. You can download it if you need to have a copy of it, print it out, whatever the case might be. Or you can use the folder to the right with the arrow in it and make a copy of this file into a documents folder, okay? So let's just say this was Mary Smith's um, blood work, for example, and now I wanna copy this. I got this from her doctor, and now I wanna copy it into Mary Smith's docs. And I would just select the folder, and now there's a copy of it there as well. Okay, so not only can you send one of the, your, your PDF files as a fax, you can also receive documents as a fax and then move it over into a new folder. So I'm just gonna show you that really quickly again. Hover over the file that you wanna move, click on the folder with the arrow, copy to, choose where you wanna send it. So let's just say Jennifer Smith now and select folder. Okay, and now there's a copy of it in Jennifer Smith's file. Um, so a couple of people are asking where they would find their fax number. Yes. So if you're on the pro plan, you don't have a dedicated fax number. Um, only the plus plan users have a dedicated fax number. So you can send faxes. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, set up a fax number. If you're on the plus plan, you're going to go to settings and preferences. Okay. And under all settings and preferences, going to have faxes at the bottom left hand side. Okay, faxes. And this is where you're going to have your dedicated fax number. Then you can add fax contacts as well. Um, you know, add some details about your who, you know, your default sender name and that sort of thing. Um, but this is the fax number if you're on the plus plan that you'll be able to give to other people or, or other providers. Um, so you can receive faxes directly into practice better. Okay, Shelly, are there any questions while I, where from? Um, Have we missed? Yeah, let's see. Um, will the client see all the files in their linked folders? Can you have a folder that's not visible to the client? Yeah, that's a great question. So the folders that we, let's go back to Mary Smith, just so we get used to this, this sequence and the documents. So the only thing, so right here under Mary's handouts, Mary's journals, client handout, Feb 18, 2019, sample exercise plan, these are all files that I've uploaded for Mary, but I haven't necessarily shared with her. So when you upload a, full, uh, a file, let me upload something to her file here just to give you an example, okay? So again, that red button, Select file, we're gonna do the three-day journal. So when you upload it, by default, it's going to be private, okay? So at this point, the, the, the file that I'm uploading is private and Mary's not going to see it, okay? If I did wanna share it with Mary, then I would change this to share files with client and I would just check box her name, check mark the box next to her name, <laughs> okay? So, you can see what has been shared because it does have that little icon, shared icon, so the icon of the two people besides the file name. Uh, but by default, the, set, the, the files that you're uploading to her folder will not be shared with her, okay? You can change that if you wanted. So if you did want to, I know this is not the question, but if you did want to share a folder with her by default, you would go to My Practice and then Documents, and you would see her folder and you'd click on the little icon for the sharing settings. And you would change that from private to shared. Okay, and again, you would check, check mark her name and update. But the default setting that is important that you understand, the default setting is that it is private. Anything you're, up, you're uploading to her folder will not be shared with her unless you explicitly go ahead and either share the entire folder or the content of the folder, okay? And keep in mind when you're looking through your files, 
look for the little shared icon next to the file or the folder. Okay, that's what's going to be indicative that this has indeed been shared with the client. Okay. And you can always click on it and see the client who has access to it and when it was shared with them. There's another really cool thing about where I went and I talked about sharing Mary's file or folder. But if you wanted to share a folder with all of your clients, okay, you could do that as well. So maybe if you have general handouts that, you know, maybe the importance of drinking water or the importance of, I don't know, getting to sleep early. Right. If you wanted to do something like that, you could also do that. So you could basically, let's say client handouts, maybe this was a folder that you want to share with all clients. You could say manage sharing settings. Again, it's private, we see, but you can, we can change that setting to share folder with all clients. So all clients, that means all clients who have currently have access to the Practice Better portal and clients who will gain access to the Practice Better portal in the future, okay? So if you wanted to give them getting started documents, you could go ahead and share that specific folder with them or those specific files with them. So that way, as a client gains access to Practice Better, they also have access to those uh, documents waiting for them. All right, so before, Shelly, we want to talk about um, one of the really common scenarios that you get a lot of questions about, which is... Yeah. Um, yeah, so lab. I mean... Oh, the labs? Yeah. Do you mind running through that? Yeah, I mean, we get a lot of questions from you guys about labs and, you know, you get your lab reports for your clients prior to your session with them and you just want to be able to have them ready to go. You're, you don't necessarily want to share, share it with them yet, but you want to have it, you want to upload it, have it organized um, so that once you meet with your client, review the reports, then you can just quickly and easily share it with them so that they have access if they want to just look at it or download it. Um, so we're just gonna run through how you can do that. Yeah, so again, if it were Mary Smith, for example, you, mm -hmm. have, you received the, the lab results for Mary Smith, you could go right into her file. Mm -hmm. okay, this is the most common way into the documents that might, so we'll just go in that area. So my client, Mary Smith, and then documents, and as we created Mary's handouts and Mary's journal folders, you would do the same thing, but do one for her lab results. So you would say Mary Smith lab results, for example, or reports or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then we can upload files into that folder. So again, using either your hard drive, your Dropbox or your Google Drive. So let's do it from our hard drive. And say blood work, let's say that was Mary's and I can even specify. So right here, when I upload it, before I upload it, it gives me again, the options of which folder to put it in. So the default being Mary Smith docs. But again, if I wanted to go into her Mary Smith lab results, I would just change the folder, mm -hmm. select that folder and then upload. So again, this is private. So you could go in when Mary Smith comes into her session and you wanna go over her results with her, right? You can go right back into, I know we're doing this a couple of times, but I want this to, this flow to be familiar, is you would go back into Mary Smith's file, right? And find her documents. You can double click on her lab results folder, and then you can just click on the view. You can just click on the little eye, so you can pull it up and you can talk to her about whatever it is um, that came back into reports. And then maybe at the end of that session, you now want to share access to that report with her. And then you would just click on the little manage sharing settings icon. Change it from private to share with client. And again, we uploaded this directly into her root or linked folder. So the only option will be to share it with Mary Smith. So you don't have to worry about sharing it with someone else and then update. So now she also has a copy of her lab results in her client portal. Okay. Um, 
Gerald asks if we can drag and drop uh, Google Drive, uh, sorry, from Google Drive to the folders. No, you can't, not at the moment. It might be something um, that you can do in time, but you can't at the moment. You can only drag and drop files that have already been uploaded to Practice Better into different folders. Anna, did we answer your question about receiving faxes? Perfect. Okay. Let me just give take a scan through. Shelly, I'm going to take a scan through some of your questions yep. to make sure um, to make sure that we're getting to as many of these as we can. Let me know or let us know in the chat. Has this been helpful? Has this been um, has this helped bring a bit of clarity around what you can do with uh, Practice Better documents? How you can share a file with a particular client or share it with multiple clients? Yes, yes. Perfect, Ellen, yes. Tara, yes, okay. We really wanted to make this, um, we wanted, we really wanted to, to take this time to, you know, take some of the questions out of the equation because we know that, you know, you can start doing some, some more complicated things with, uh, with the documents in terms of, sharing it with multiple people and so on and so forth. But we also wanted to bring it back down to the basics so that way, you know, it wasn't, the complexities weren't interfering with some of your day-to-day, -day, your day-to-day -day, um, tasks, right? Okay. So Anna, my client said she just had sent a document for the portal, but I'm not seeing it. Is there something she needs to do uh, on her end. So she, and if your client sent you a file from the client portal, you should have, you should see a little um, notification in the top right hand corner of your portal. You can click on it. You can actually click on view all in case you missed it. Um, but you could just go right directly into that client's file. Again, if it were Mary Smith. And under documents, you would click on all shared documents. Okay. Sorry. Um, all shared documents. If you knew where she shared the file with you, you could go right into that folder or filter, but it will they will be all at the bottom of sorry, they'll all be at the bottom of your folders. Okay, so you could see last modified, for example, and I can see what was last shared with me from this client or what was last shared with them. So it will be in this list at the bottom, unfiltered, or in the subfolders under shared documents. Uh, Joe said, templated file structure for all patients. When I set up a new patient, is there a way to import that file structure all in one step? There's not at the moment. So that's a really great suggestion. I think that's on our roadmap. Um, but it's not available at the moment. Can you change the default settings for all clients so that anything upload to a client folder gets shared? No, you can't do that at the moment. Um, it's definitely something we can look into, um, giving you, yeah, I, I'll definitely chat with our tech team about that, um, giving you that option, but at the moment you can't. Um, we would, I think we would be terrified that we would enable that and then we would share something that you wouldn't want um, available to a client. I've seen a few questions, similar questions about the storage space for mm -hmm. the plans. Um, yeah. Want to answer that? Yeah, so um, you can actually check your storage capacity from the documents page. So on the left hand side, Mm -hmm. uh, below where we see the Dropbox in the Google Drive, you can actually see how much storage you've used right below that. <clears throat> and how much you have, so in your case, right. five gigs. Yeah. yeah, how much you have and how much you've used. Um, the really great thing about being able to share 
a single file or multiple files with multiple people is that you're basically just giving those people access to the document. So it doesn't count. Let's say if I went back into um, my client handouts, for example, and I shared, sorry, I have a touch screen and I enable touch screen somehow. Uh, <laughs> so let's just say I shared this 10 day challenge with, you know, six clients. It's like I only uploaded one file. So it doesn't count six times. So it's really great in terms of helping keep your storage down once you've uploaded it to practice better one time. And even though you're sharing it with a hundred clients, um, it only works towards your, your storage capacity that one time that you upload it. So, so yeah, so you can check your storage capacity here. If ever you run out of storage, um, you can just send us a message to help at practicebetter.io. It's a dollar a gig. Um, for additional space. So it's really, um, really, really affordable. Um, and if your client, if you're not able to see the file, she may not have, she may not have shared it um, properly. What I can do is I can show you what it looks like on the client side um, for them to share a file with you. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Let's go into the client side here for just a minute and take a look at what that would look like for a client. And it's a good idea if you have a test client to go ahead and try this out. So that way you can tell them how easy it is to share a file with you. But when they come into their Practice Better portal, they can go right down to Documents on the left-hand side in their menu. Documents, and then they're going to have that same uh, red button in the bottom right-hand corner as you do, so that they can upload their file. So, sorry. Okay, so you guys have no idea how many screens are flashing. Zoom keeps popping up all their screens. It's, it's a little messy, sorry. So they have that same red button as you had on your side. And they're gonna select their files with you and maybe they're sending you their three-day food journal and they have to make sure that they click upload. Okay, so that might have been a, a piece that they missed. You could ask them, um, and if they did get this confirmation um, to upload their file, okay? Maybe they, they may have missed that piece, um, and so maybe it didn't actually send. Okay, perfect. So if there are any other questions that we didn't get to, Feel free to drop them in the chat now um, and let us know so that way we can get to them before we wrap up. Otherwise, um, if there are questions that we didn't get to, you can always shoot uh, us an email at help at practicebetter.io with them. Um, I'll make sure to send tomorrow with the replay. We'll send any uh, help articles. Um, we'll send any help articles that go along with anything we talked about today. Uh, Gerald asks, is there a knowledge base or video about linking Google Drive with Practice Better? Uh, I am not certain. Do you mean just actually linking it in third-party integration? Yeah, I, I actually was just looking. There isn't a, like a specific article on that, but I think we can send her the information on how to do that. Um, yeah. So. There, I don't think there's a help article on that topic, Gerald, but you can, um, let me see if I can find one that can go out with the replay tomorrow. But what you'll do is just go to the third, the little gear in the top right corner, mm -hmm. third party integration. And when you click link, you should just be able to type in like my email address at gmail.com and then the password and then say link. It's really straightforward. It should be. So yeah. try it um, and let me take a look, see if we do have a help article on the topic. Um, so there's, there's another question that I've seen yeah. a couple of times already. So while creating a protocol, is there any way to add a document to the protocol from the shared document stored in Better and have the selected document shared with the client automatically in the protocol? 
So the answer to that is not yet. Um, at the moment, the files that have been uploaded to your documents in Practice Better can only be uh, shared from there. So we will be changing this behavior. We will be allowing you to, let's say you're building protocol, like you mentioned, um, creating a session note or working in a program. We will be changing this behavior so you'll be able to use link files that you've already added to practice better. But at the moment, you're gonna have to upload it from your, your hard drive. And can you archive a client, so remove their access at some point, but maintain all the records in case they return and you want to reactivate. Yes, absolutely. So you can, what we call deactivate a client. So under my client, if you go to view all, you can just simply click on the three dots next to a client's name, and then you just say deactivate. So everything's going to remain intact, although they won't be able to um, log into practice better anymore. And then you can just simply reactivate them. They're at the bottom of your list and click on the three dots. Oh, sorry. And click on activate. And now Jennifer Smith can log back in and everything's still there. Yeah. And so does it matter um, whether the client uploads a document into documents versus sending a message with an attachment with the document? Is there any no. difference? Yeah, that's a great question. It doesn't matter. It all goes to the same place. So again, we're going to keep going back to Mary Smith here. Um, if I go to her document section, it's mm -hmm. all going to be under all shared documents. All going to be under uh, all shared documents. Mm -hmm. And if you know that she sent it in a message, or again, you know that she sent it, um, let's say she uploaded it. So Mary shared uploads. That would be coming from her document section. You can click on, on the appropriate folder, but if you don't know where she shared it from, you can just reference the whole list of all the files that have been shared between you two at the bottom of the folders. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So these folders here are basically like filters. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just like you, if you go back and you say, I know I shared a document with her as part of a protocol. So you could go into the protocol section instead of having to go through everything else. Okay. All right, um, I saw a question about a test client, creating a test client. Um, to create a test client, you're just gonna go to my clients, add client, and then when you add a client, you're gonna use a secondary email address that you already own. So that way you can go in and activate your client account uh, with, a, with an email address that you own so you can log in and work as a client in one account and work as a practitioner in the other account. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Okay, so I think that that's all for now. Thank you so much. Thanks so much guys for sticking around. Uh, thanks so much for being so engaged as always. Uh, we hope you really like the, you know, the new enhancements to the documents. We've got some really, really cool stuff coming out soon, uh, which we'll tell you a bit more about um, soon. <laughs> um, and let us know if you have any questions. Let us know at help at practicebetter.io. If you have any questions, our team is always there and always ready to help. All right. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.